Oh, welcome back to CTV Morning Live and our special uh, show today coming to you live from the Ben Franklin Park Superdome. And Jim Kite, <laughs> he's looking at that shot. He's smiling right now, but uh, definitely wasn't smiling as this happened. Uh, he's been through his fair share of concussions and is one of the speakers joining us there right now uh, for our next uh, segment. Also joining him, uh, former CFL All-Star player, uh, Kenner Burke. Great to see you once again. And you brought the youngest of the three. Yeah, There's Nate. little Nate. Hello, Nate. Hi, Nate. He's been playing with the ball over the course of the last yeah. little bit. And also joining us right now is Harry Zarens, who's joining us from the Brain Injury Association of Canada. The three gentlemen here that you see right now are kind of building on what it is that we've already created here this morning. We've done a four-hour show. You're looking to actually create an entire day, an actual uh, concussions conference. What was the idea behind this? I think there's been so much chatter, and Jimmy, you can correct me if I'm wrong, there's been so much chatter about the, the topic of concussions, and uh, rightly so. I think maybe more about the streamline and provide information and uh, develop a basic Daddy! knowledge that people can utilize as we, as, as we go forward because it is a hot topic. Yeah. I think it, timing is perfect for us to have dialogue and discourse regarding Daddy! the subject. Yeah. No question, knowledge is power and if we can educate whether it's coaches, parents, players, getting over the stigma of coming forward and such as this show is doing here today, mm -hmm. it would be, be fantastic. Uh, Harry, very briefly, if you can, tell us a little bit more about what the Brain Injury Associ uh, Association of Canada is. Well, we certainly provide the information through our website and through our social media, and we also advocate for people who uh, have a brain injury, a concussion, and have uh, disabilities associated to cognitive, uh, behavioral uh, issues, emotional issues, and uh, provide the resources or contacts for them to go visit uh, the proper health professional to deal with those issues. You're, all, you're the liaison, you're kind of helping to filter everything through. That's right, we're the liaison, we're the doc connectors and we work with uh, a number of groups in terms of providing the information and we call it the invisible inf uh, condition because sometimes you don't see it and as uh, Dr. Zemek said earlier, you have to, uh, parents have to be aware of their children and if their marks drop uh, and they're very ath athletic, there could be a tie-in to a, a concussion at some point in their career. You were also just mentioning earlier that you have adults coming in and saying, well, that's why I just I couldn't quite focus on the job and I couldn't, you, lots of different instances later on. Well, like uh, Jim said, uh, information is uh, power and knowledge and certainly people are reading the stories, they're reading the uh, conditions and disabilities and they say, gee, I remember I fell off a bike 25 years ago and all of a sudden I couldn't hold a job or I had uh, challenges reading or memory, uh, remembering things. And they tie it back into that uh, incident and say, well, this all started when, when, this, when the incidents have happened. Actually, You've had a number of incidences, but you've also been able to see it from both sides as a coach as well and coaching your son's uh, uh, hockey as well. You've had a, a different opinion seeing them coming off the ice as well. Well, as you saw in the video, I've been a victim of a concussion, <laughs> uh, but certainly that's one of the one reasons why I got involved in coaching so, uh, because I wasn't sure what kind of knowledge the coaches that were going to be coaching my kids were going to have, and I wanted to make sure that if anything, err on the side of caution when it comes to head injuries. And I coach hockey and there's a contact sport. And I'm an advocate of, of physical contact in, in hockey, uh, but it needs to be done properly and you need to have the education. So when, even with the trainer, we'd say that the, the player was okay to come back into the game. I'd say, you know what, let's give him a couple of extra shifts and maybe give him the game off. And I just wanted to be on the side of caution rather than, you know, he's our best player, but I, I liked how you said the player was the last person you were going to ask if they were okay to head back on. That's true. Well, that, that one little clip that you saw before we started, uh, I, he put a forage crack in my helmet. That was Joey Kosher. He missed the next two weeks because he had a bad hand. His hand was swollen. He had it on ice and so forth. I played the very next night in St. Louis. Right? The coach came to me and said, Jim, can you play? And I said, sure, I can play coach. Last person you should ask. And uh, I had a headache for six weeks and I was dizzy. And that's a perfect example where the, the concussion is hidden, but you can see a physical injury such as a broken hand or a broken ankle. I yeah. mean, you've had your fair share, I know as well, but you now it. have, you know, your, your kids are older, you have three young kids now with yeah. a lot more information. Mm -hmm. What do you think now? You've, you've been through a number of very aggressive sports that yeah. you want your kids to be able to, to do and participate in. I think, I think the question is, do you let them participate? Do you let them? Because I know there are some parents out there who are going to take their kids out of hockey, out of football, because uh, what they're hearing is that concussions are bad and they think it's almost an epidemic. The fact of the matter is that there's always been concussions. Right. I think the knowledge base has grown, grown so yeah. much mm -hmm. that there's more knowledge so people are making decisions, perhaps not uh, the most uh, fact-based decision. I think it's an emotional decision. Mm -hmm. The pendulum swung so far to one side and it has to be brought back to center. But for myself and for Pam and, and for our kids, 
20 years ago, we probably wouldn't have this conversation. Do we let no, them play? No. Because we were concerned about concussions. Today, we'll have that conversation. Um, do we? Does that mean he'll? be a musician more than an athlete? I don't know. A lot of it's going to be about what he wants to do as well. And, and the knowledge that he has to communicate with you if something is Yeah, the and that, that's is the that. great thing. Parents will do that. Overall, we want the big education, and so we'll wait to hear more details on when you've gotten all the pieces uh, together for the big uh, con the concussion conference, and I know you want to bus in a whole bunch of students and athletes and school boards, so best of luck putting that together. I'm sure it'll be a, a, a hot ticket uh, once uh, all of the uh, all the people know it's all placed together, so good luck with that. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you.